What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at a new router. This is the Ray E E6 AX6000 gaming router. This is a high speed gaming router with a lot of advanced features to help you get the best Wi Fi and gaming performance possible. Taking a look at the specs, this router has Wi Fi 6 with speeds up to 5,952 megabits per second, a quad core 2 gigahertz processor, a very fast 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port and eight antennas to give you strong whole house Wi-Fi coverage. Taking a look inside the box, you have your AC adapter, a small ethernet cable, a absolutely massive user manual. This is probably the largest user manual I've ever seen come with any product, but very, very simple directions, very, very easy to set up. So if you're someone who doesn't have good vision, this is going to be a great manual for you. You're going to be able to see it very easily. And then last but not least, you have the actual router itself. So taking a look at the router itself, this is definitely a much larger router than I thought it would be. Maybe it's typical size. I'm not entirely sure. I've never used a gaming router before this one. Before this one, I just had regular consumer routers with not that many antennas. Or right now, I use a Eero Pro, which is a very tiny box maybe 25% of the size of this, but you can see pretty large router, but it does feel well built. And judging by the size of these antennas and the overall size of this router, it does look like a mean serious business. So I'm really hoping it delivers just as well as it looks. So looking at the sides of the router right here, we have all the antennas. It looks like there's four because they're grouped together, but there's actually a total of eight antennas in total. And there's also some flexibility on them as well. So you can position them and get them wherever you want them for the best reception possible. Beside the eight antennas, this also has eight front end modules or FEMs for short. And basically what these are, are receivers and amplifiers for each antenna. Some routers might have three or four modules and they'll have multiple antennas linked to that one module. This is gonna give you a wide reception still, but the signal is not gonna be that strong. This one actually has one module per antenna. So this is gonna give you a wide Wi-Fi coverage but also a strong signal as well. So if you have a lot of walls in your house, maybe you gotta go through a floor or two, that's really gonna help this broadcast and go through those walls to keep that signal nice and strong. Taking a look at the ports in back, you have your power port, a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, and then you have four one gigabit ethernet ports. This also has aggregation features. So if you're someone that has two internet connections, you can link them up in this router as well and it'll put them together. This is not gonna sum them up to give you a faster connection to your house, but what it's gonna do is give you more throughput. So this way, if you have a bunch of devices connected to it, it's not gonna be slowing down that one connection. With two of them, it'll have more data to spread around to all your devices. Then right here, you have your gaming port where you can connect your console or your gaming PC, and this is gonna auto-prioritize that device over the rest. So say, like I said earlier, if you have a bunch of things connected, slowing down your connection, if it detects this one is trying to pull more data, it's going to steal from these guys, slow these down and make sure it puts all the speed onto this one. So a nice little feature. This is plug and play as well. So you don't need to do any setup. You just plug it in there and automatically the router is going to do the rest and make sure this guy is always getting the best uh, speed possible. It doesn't have to be a gaming console. You could also make this for your office PC, your work PC, whatever it is. So whatever device you want to always have the best connection over these, that's what you want to plug it in right here. Another cool thing about this router is this 2.5 gigabit port can be used as your main internet port, or you can also connect your internet to this one and use this port to connect your local storage, a media server, or any other device to really take advantage of its higher bandwidth. Like many of you, I have not heard of this brand Ray E before. They're pretty new in the US market, but if you look online, even here in the US, they released quite a few different models already. And if you look at their Amazon reviews, majority of them are pretty good. The bad ones are usually people that can't figure out something in the router. Maybe they don't know how to configure it. They're not too tech savvy. But like I said, configuration was very, very easy. So I'm not sure what the deal was there. But overall performance wise and usage, everybody seems to be pretty happy. So even though they aren't very well known as a brand, they seem to be off to a very good start so far. So hopefully this router performs as good as the reputation seems to be. All right, let's go ahead and do some speed tests. First up, I have my Eero Pro router. This is about 10 feet from where I currently have my laptop. There is one wall between these two areas, so I'm not sure if there's gonna be a difference in this short of a distance, but we'll find out.
All right, so as you can see with the Eero Pro, we got 381 down and 12.6 up. Let's go ahead and plug in the Ray E and see what the difference is. Okay, so the Ray E is plugged in. I'm connected to that now. The Ray E is in the same exact spot that the Eero was, so this should be a direct comparison. Already a whole lot quicker. With the Eero, again, it was 381 a second. It looks like we're almost about to touch 700 here. 700 going past 700 720 725 that is more than double of the Eero in the same exact distance since we were so close to the router i didn't think it was going to make much of a difference as you can see a pretty drastic increase in speed all right so now we're going to do a longer range test we're back on the Eero pro i couldn't move the Eero itself because i'm really big on wire management and i have the Eero taped on the wall i have all the connections running through my desk i didn't want to move everything just for this test so instead what i did is i grabbed my laptop and i went all the way in the other end of my house so upstairs and opposite corner from the router about 25 feet in total and this is the results i got so we have 175 down and then we have 85 on the up so pretty much cut in half because before we had 381 on the download now we have 175 so switching back to the Ray E once again, I took my laptop to the same exact spot so it can be a direct comparison. And this performed a lot better than I thought it would. So the Eero was at 175 and that's edge to edge in my house. Again, about 25 feet going through a few walls and one floor. This one got 340 megabits. So same as the Eero, it pretty much cut itself in half. So regardless if I'm closer to the router or further, it seems to be that this router performs twice as good as my Eero. Here's all the tests side by side so you can compare the speed differences as well. As I said earlier, I did take out the other mesh components, but one thing I forgot to mention with this uh, Ray E router is this can also be a mesh system as well. So you can buy another router. It tells you in the manual how to set it up as a mesh system. So honestly, I think I'm probably going to ditch my Eros and just get one or two more Ray E's. And that's going to give me a full, much better connection in my house. And I don't have to spend nearly as much as I did on the Eros. So connecting to the router settings, this is what it looks like. And I got to say, this looks very well done. For a small company, I would expect it to look generic. Well, even not small companies, there's a lot of big name routers out there that still use interfaces for the router settings that look like they came from the 90s. But this looks very updated and modern, lots of information, so I like that. So coming up top, you have your router mode right here. you got your upload and download speed, which are both live, so you can monitor what's going on in your system. you got your network ping, packet loss. So coming to the bottom, you have a few more settings and features that the router has as well. So right here first, you have priority devices. So this is similar to the game port, where the game port you plug in physically to the router and that prioritizes that device. But if you want more than one device, so say if you want that to be number one, and then you want another device to also be a priority, you can put that on this list and that'll make sure it's all, that's always faster, even if it has to slow down other things in your house to make it that way. Over here, you have a toggle for auto bandwidth control. You could put that on or off as well. Another really cool feature this router has right here is called game Wi-Fi. So similar to the game port, well, this one, it's a physical connection. You plug in there and that gets prioritized. So if you have something that you want to prioritize, but you don't have a Ethernet cable to run to it, that's when you can connect it to game Wi-Fi and that'll get prioritized as well. What's cool about this is this is actually its own Wi-Fi connection. So you have your house Wi-Fi, whatever, my internet connection one, and then it'll say my internet connection one game Wi-Fi or whatever you want to call it. It's a totally different uh, connection to connect to. So everything else you can connect to the other one and then you could connect your game to that game Wi-Fi. So even if it's not just games, another cool way you can use this is say you have a bunch of people in your house or maybe you pay for internet and you want to have, make sure you always get the fastest speeds. You can give the other Wi-Fi name to everybody else and they'll get normal speeds. And then you can always make sure you're connected on game Wi-Fi. So if it comes to a time where your internet is getting bogged down, it'll cut all of them off and start lowering the speed on their connection and make sure you always get the fastest connections. And then last but not least, right down here you have console booster. I'm not exactly sure how this works, but in the description it says gear up console booster is designed to optimize your gaming network, regardless of whether you use a Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, Steam, Black, blah, blah, blah. A two month free trial was offered to new users of this router. So basically somehow 
does some magic to make your router go faster and speed up your gaming performance. Again, I don't know exactly how it performs. You might want to reach out to them if you want more information on that, but another bonus feature this router has. So I'm not going to go over every single setting that this router has, but I like that it has the option to do more advanced things like routers should. I've had the Eero for a few years now, and like I said, I'm a techie person who's always doing a lot with my computer. Sometimes I need to forward ports or mess with some setting, and the Eero just doesn't let you do that. There is some things you can do, but a lot of it's kind of locked down, doesn't let you control it the way you want to control it. So I wanted to come back to something that will let me do all the advanced tweaks and settings that I want to do. Again, this is very easy to use. So if you're someone who doesn't want to do techie stuff, you can just set this up, set up your Wi-Fi, and you'll be good to go. You don't need to mess with anything. But if you are someone who wants to mess with settings, you do have all of those on this as well. Overall, this is definitely a solid router. The speeds are fast, the range is good, and even better, it's also very affordable as well. So if you happen to be shopping for a new router, I would highly recommend this one here, which again is the Ray-E E6 AX6000. All right, well, that about wraps up this video. As usual, if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.